Okay. Well, thanks everybody for joining us here for the Ecological City Art and Climate Solutions uh, project and our planning meeting on Zoom. So I will be presenting um, a little later after other people have spoken, um, just some of the ideas and plans of how we're going to adapt the pageant this year and our workshops considering COVID. But I think we have a lot of good ideas and we'll also have a time for some discussion and feedback because maybe you all also have ideas that we haven't thought of um, you know, in this new world as we're trying to continue action and collaboration um, safely um, and not just only do remote, you know, try to do whatever we can live outdoors with physical distancing um, and safety and do a combination, you know, with um, some live streaming so we can have even more engagement. So um, great, I'll give it over to Hannah to introduce. Hi everyone, um, my name is Hannah. I'm the production coordinator for um, Ecological City Project for 2021. Um, so I'll be introducing the speakers for today. Um, the first speaker that we're gonna hear from today is um, our guest or our artist in residence, Michelle Brody, um, who works on our Earth Celebration costumes. Her workshops are gonna be Wednesday nights um, so I'll put more info about that in the chat box, but we're going to hear from Michelle first. So I'll go ahead and spotlight her video and we'll get your presentation up. Okay, and so you're going to um, click the images as I tell you to change them, Hannah? Correct, Crystal. Uh, yes, I'll be, I'll be in control of that. Okay, great. You can just say next and I'll go. Awesome. Okay, well, hey, everybody. I look forward to um, having these uh, in person uh, come March. Um, so I'm going to show some pieces that uh, that we've made in the last few years and how some of the same techniques and ideas that have used in the past and can using them into the two new costumes that we're going to be working on. Also have some older costumes that I'd like to refurbish as well. Um, so we're looking at Gaia here. And in particular, I'd like you to point out looking at the um, backdrop that she holds up of the earth and uh, holding up the elements that's all been uh, painted silk. And that's something that I'll be continuing into uh, the new costumes for this coming, uh, coming up. Um, let's go to the next one. Um, okay. And um, what we have here uh, um, are a uh, climate consequences costume um which is also painted silk and uh on the right is our wonderful silk painter rosa um wearing the uh sustainable development goals costume that was made that was made um actually the uh, costume part is all painted silk that she and pedro did but then the hat the facial part um which is also printed on um fabric uh, was a wonderful collaboration that I did with some of the volunteers. So um, uh, we're going to continue doing more hat making for the costumes as well. So what's our next slide? Okay, so um, Water Climate Spirit is um, going to be for, uh, oh, those images are really small. It's too bad that we can't. Ex okay, so what the uh, this costume is going to be is focusing on the hundred year old the hundred year flood map. So what you have on the right is a map of New York uh, and some New Jersey there, and then on the left, what you're seeing is the uh, hundred year flood map showing how much of the main the uh, mainland of Manhattan, as well as all throughout 
Jersey City there and Brooklyn, Queens and in the Bronx too, that gets flooded. And so it's going to be painted on silk, um, sort of like a kimono, but um, showing this, uh, um, you know, where the flooding, especially that, uh, that will happen. Um, can I go to the next slide? Okay, and that shows more of how this will be um, seen. You'll see the tip of Manhattan on the front and then upper Manhattan and the Bronx in the back. So it's gonna be a full map of the city that's gonna be worn. And actually, can you go back two or three slides? Yeah, so the headdress part is, looks like it's, um, it's gonna be, it's basically, focusing on the uh, fountain, the original fountain shape that was um, installed, that's installed at, uh, at uh, City Hall. And the water is actually gonna be coming down in the shape of LED lights that will be flashing, that'll be run by um, battery power. So we can go to the next keep going forward. I think I've got some reference images there. Next one. No, okay. So yeah, the blue lights on the left just kind of show you what um, the water is going to be uh, presented as. So um, I'm showing here um, a carbon sequestration costume from this past year. Uh, that I had wonderful help from Joanne Fink to finish, and she's wearing for last year's um, Mart, for last year's uh, pageant. Uh, if we go to the next slide, um, here's the drawing for soil roots carbon sequestration, but really focusing not necessarily on how water, okay, that image is really small, but uh, really tiny, tiny image there on the left. Um, yeah, I don't know why you put two slides together, but either way. Um, I'm sorry, it just uh, turned out that way. It, okay. Yeah, if you're looking, are you looking at it as a PowerPoint or as a PDF? If you look at single page, yeah. No, I mean, it's just to show, um, basically what we all learned about how roots grow under the ground and uh, and how the um, chlorophyll collects light and feeds the plants you know that is also a process of filtering carbon certainly out of the atmosphere and being condensed down to the ground that's certainly a big process of ways that they're trying to capture Carb, um, carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere uh, and pre preventing more climate change. So um, if we move on to the image for carbon sequestration costume. That's, oh, now you have to go down in size. There you go, there she is. Um, this is gonna be a fun costume to make. She's gonna have kind of like a corset and uh, these leaves that are, are gonna be kind of like fanning out from behind. And it's gonna be a great fun to make this all spread out. And it's also gonna be painted with um, silk organza. And I think I have my model in the next image. Let's go to the next. Um, I, I don't think there's any more. No? All anything. right. Then I'll have to show her here. Here she is. Wow. So, um, so yeah, so then uh, you can just basically showing how there's gonna be an under silk dress that uh, this costume will have, and um, you know, going to be really playing with creating the roots using all using sisal, all natural materials. Um, for all the headdresses, we use this material called buckram that we'll be painting for our leaves. 
sisal and then the organza silk, which will be painted. Beautiful. Okay. And then for the blue, I'm hoping we still have a lot of indigo dye still there for, for dyeing that. Okay. Beautiful. Thank you. Beautiful, Michelle. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. We're all looking forward to that. Um, as a reminder, everyone, Michelle's workshops will be on Wednesday nights, starting um, at the end of February here. Okay. Uh, well, it's March. Uh, it's actually first week in well, March. Yours is the first week of March, right? Right. And we're going to be mostly doing outside, right? Correct. We'll have a very small number of RSVPs available for the right. workshops. Um, so we'll have we have a whole process for that here. Um, and I shared the Eventbrite link in the chat. Um, so that's where you can look and sign up for the workshops and make sure that you secure your spot. Um, the next artist we'll hear from is Lucrecia Novoa. She's going to tell us about um, her puppet workshops which are gonna take place on Saturdays. So we're gonna hear from Lucrecia. Here, there you are. Hi, Lucrecia. Hi. Hi, everybody. Hey. Hi, 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 Felicia. Well, uh, happy to be part of this group again, coming back and um, my name is Lucrecia. Next slide. You can move this slide. Move it. You need to, to move the slides. It's just. Yeah, I'm sorry. Oh, ah, yeah, yeah. This wasn't yeah. Good. Uh, no, no, the second one. Yeah. Uh, visual artist. I am a director of the Puppet Workshop since 2003. But uh, this year we are going to work in the community center in Lower East Side. Uh, the workshop for the making puppet are from February 27 to May 1st, from one to four. Next one. Yeah. Um, I'm working in a three different concepts. So with the volunteers, we are going to work in clay, like every year we work in clay. And the, the face is like three uh, feet long. And we have three concepts. The first one is called climate drawdown solution. And that means uh, all definition, Brief definition is uh, an ongoing review and analysis of the solution already exists and make better. So we can uh, see in the design different drawing of uh, electric car, um, vertical um, garden, roof garden. I cannot see the picture because I am, um, okay, I take off all the, the faces. Um, um, different element can be part of this uh, concept. So this is going to be um, after uh, model the clay and paper mache copy and after we are going to paint with acrylic paint all this concept. Next uh, picture, please. Yeah, uh, this is going to be the dress. The puppet is around uh, 10 feet tall with a puppeteer or the pen, if we are going to exhibit this on the garden can be just hold on the fence and we don't need really uh, have a puppeteers, but because they are not going to walk around. So we have to see how this is going to work this year. But um, usually we work in the dress has a three, um, the piece like a cone dress for the past three years, but now it's not really necessary. So I designed this as a panel and I wrote all the elements I made in the face. So we can write letters or make another logos for each one of the elements. So next one. 
next picture, please. Next one. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. The next one is biodiversity. Uh, one forward, please. I need to show the biodiversity face. Yeah, that one. Biodiversity is another concept. Same idea, make a face in clay and make a copy and paper mache. The biodiversity is all different kind of life we can find in the area. So I try to divide three different biodiversity like genetic within a species. For example, you can see the dogs, they are different breed of dogs. And another biodiversity is between species so you can find dogs and bears and other animals or features and biodiversity, which includes ecosystem. And that is more complex. Next one. Yeah, next one is also the dress has a panel. And in that um, Piece, I am going to again show what is the genetic, different kind of size of features, different kind of a peak on the birds uh, and animals. Um, this is for different species. Biodiversity, uh, we are going to uh, make a drawing of the ecosystem. So definition of our ecosystem, you can find also in anywhere, so I'm not going to take much time about definitions. Next one, next picture, yeah. Next picture is a regenerative, oh my God, this word is hard for me, sustainability, sustainability. Um, again, uh, it's, a, it's a design looking for better lifestyle, making improvement. So for example, we can see cover crop and crop rotation, uh, reducing tilling, composting, uh, composting in rural areas, et cetera. So I try to uh, organize all this element, but at the same time, try to do not interfere with the face. So I try to locate it, the composting uh, in has a ears, etc. So I, I need to balance the drawings on the face. Next one. Next one also is a dress. I find out there are many uh, important companies uh, very interested in invest in environmental things. So I decided maybe introduce this because also we criti criticize a, a lot about big companies, but there are some companies really interested in, in this idea to help uh, to the environment. So practically this is uh, my exposition of these drawings. Yeah, done. Great, thank you, Lucrecia. You're welcome. Great, yes, thank you, Lucrecia. <laughs> Looking Ooh. forward to those beautiful pieces. Um, the next artist that we'll hear from today is Catherine Fregang, um, who will be presenting um, some works regarding um, some previous works of mobile murals and looking at our climate solution flags. So here, let's do this here. And we'll pull up your presentation here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, um, the next, this is not my slides yet. So let's get into the slides. Yeah, so um, I have um, really been working on the sustainable solutions, uh, bringing those uh, out to the front and doing a number of signage program uh, projects over the, over the last three or four years to be very clear about uh, what the gardens and 
are offering and what's what's going on in the Lower East Side. Um, and I came up with this um, coloring book really format. And uh, the first project was to do these black and white banners that people would come and paint. So go to the next slide. You see, this is what the what people did to them and go to the next slide. And here are people are painting them. Although this was the next year where we were doing the 40 foot mural uh, with six big murals um, showing different aspects of sustainable solutions in the Lower East Side. Um, the next slide, please, you can see the next slide shows the finished ones. This is um, showing the two bridges section of the, um, of the East River Park. Um, and the next slide, please. You're showing the um, proposed uh, recreation areas in East River Park. Um, as, and that also has in the lower part of it, uh, um, the idea of reclaiming species and, and, uh, and cleaning up the water for added species. So go to the next slide, please. And um, last year, uh, we put this all together in um, a mandala shape, which highlights what the different um, gardens are up to. Uh, in a mandala form and also refers back to what the UN sustainable solutions are. Um, and in, incorporated in this piece are um, specific solutions, but also they're under headings, for instance, just the construction of the of, of, um, of our infrastructure, which would include things like bioswales and permeable pathways. Also water management with catch ponds, rain barrels, um, and um, other things that manage water. Uh, just basic gardening, such as co with composting vertical and vertical gardening, and also biodiversity, which would include things like um, native species and pollinators. Um, and it's all in there in one place. <laughs> it's, um, it's kind of intense. It's quite layered actually. But anyway, um, go to the next slide, please. So in COVID mode, our idea here is to just do a series of flags that people can, um, we will string up together and string across the fences. And um, next slide. And we can do, I can do templates of scenes that people can color in, but we can also, we're also gonna be providing resource sheets with things like um, uh, native species, uh, and specific um, illustrations of the concepts that I've started to outline for you. And people can either um, make up their own or follow a prescribed sheet. And the idea is to um, really send these out. They'd be eight and a half by 11, send these out. Um, and I will do a how-to video, which sort of inspires people to color them in, to use them, to make up their own, to collage on them, and then send them back and we will construct them into the flags. And then the flags will then be set up on the fences. Um, there's going to be one workshop uh, at the LES Ecological Center on April 17th from 12 to three. Um, then also there are other groups will be uh, identified that want to do this and I will be available for uh, FaceTime or a Zoom meeting to uh, inspire people to have a lot of fun with this project mostly. 
And um, that's what I've got. Great. Thank you. <laughs> Great. Thank you so much, Katie. Um, looking forward to that. Yeah, we have a lot of great, exciting um, opportunities um, to see how we can adapt this year and um, get as many people involved in a very safe way while using these flags. So it'll be very interesting. Um, all right, our next presentation is going to come from Dee Dee Moucher, um, who is going to be presenting on behalf of the uh, Masters of Succession Collective and talk a little bit about bioremediation sculptures. So let's go ahead and find Dee Dee here. Uh, Dee Dee, would you like to screen share or would you like me to screen share your presentation? Hi Dee Dee, would you like to screen share? Can you unmute yourself, please? I'm unmuted. Thank you. Hello. Um, I'm just reading the panel. Screen share. There. So, hello. I have to turn, I have two phones on. You have an echo. I know, <laughs> yes. Um, I'm not sure what to do here. Okay. Check, sound check, good. I uh, turned the sound off on that one. So I had a backup, my eyes a backup in case, uh, cause I'm all hot spotted. And anyway, so, so this year for the, the floating bioremediating sculpture, so many times is such a long word, I've made it an FBS. So when I say FBS, you know what I'm talking about, the FBS. So um, Ecological City pageant this year lies um, uh, in that sure. Um, I'm um, part of Monsters of Succession Collective and uh, let me try to go into the mode. And we, everything we do is inherently creating the beneficial succession of air, water, soil, and self. So I do this in my art. So the art I make also stands by this, this idea. And the idea is uh, based in permaculture design and re regenerative design. And here, the idea of like a whole, uh, the flag, permaculture flag, um, there are many, it's, it's based on many different things together in a design science that I find to be the most um, broad and um, whole uh, system that, that includes everything and a lot of social aspects as well. So a lot of the work that I So I call it the master official succession. There's also the set of not succession. So I wanna clarify it's official. That makes it into a mob. And I like the idea of mobs because we need to mob together and collaborate. And then what we're all doing is for creative styles of mediation. So everything that we do, the product of everything we do, creates betterment of pollution. So looking at our supply chain and our resource, we can do that and also connecting with things and creating symbiotic relationships. So that's what that. This year I wanted to print cascading serendipities as the idea of because of COVID, um, I've become very aware, or I think a lot of us have, is the uh, fragility of our, our life system. And having clean water is, was like, oh my God, at least we have clean water. We're stuck inside a virus everywhere. Clean water to drink. I have been checking all, all, all these shells and there. And thankfully, we get our water from upstate. So I wanted to do a sculpture that, that had to do with connecting the region, living systems in place and then have uh, celebrate that and be grateful for it. At the same time, making it better and how we can improve the relationships all in a sculpture. So I don't know if that's gonna work. Let's see, my little arrow didn't work. Uh, this is where I get, we're stuck on this slide. Click. So here's the one dead, just in, you know, never seen it. Uh, starts up in the Catskills down to New York City 
magnets that comes to us through gravity. And the picture of the water coming down as a cascade, like it's cascading and as water is coming down, stopping along the way, creating um, a beautiful environment everywhere it goes. It, maybe it floods. More than that. Um, so here's the water. And notice here, it goes down below a thousand feet. That, that's a little confusing if I think about that. Uh, so that's our and see how it brings it. Take the current up or you can bring it, come back down with it. So it makes it really handy for saving energy um, for sailors. And uh, so there's this um, sail freight that's starting this year. And I would like to invite them. I would like to do the sculpture upstate near, near all these resources, the food shed and the water shed um, and the life shed. So uh, I'd like to do it up there partly or resource up there, like life up there, accumulate things from that relationship and then bring it down here or actually let the sculpture grow up there. And then just lie, put it on a sail freight, bring it down. I did send an email to um, the Apollonia boat to see if they bring it with them with their, this is their uh, delivery information and there's, that's their course, Hudson. Um, so as far as work I've passed, um, I, I go through the steps of pedagogy, I guess. And the first, uh, we'll be using the first for this sculpt, normally just go through the lifestyles of biomedia and symbiosis, which is the ingredients that create. Um, so here's in one year, the first year, uh, Marta, Dan, and I worked on this, and uh, this was the idea of an L. And then I like the the sequence that we that we've made in the past. Years. So here's the elder, and we started with that, and she's going off in a way. And the following year, here's actually a video. I'm going to use Keynote. Isn't that pretty? And then the next. Next year, I, I ended up doing, I was going to do this, but a little girl. And I thought, wow, this is like last year, the elder, and now the young girl. And at the same time, Greta uh, Thunberg um, was very in the news. So here is sort of a little defiant looking ahead idea. And so last uh, 2019, I'm skipping. I have these drawings here because I'm uh, the idea is not the sculpture. The sculpture is this relationship that I created intentionally as a byproduct. I came up with resources that I have. I work in the garden. I go to my friend each, and I can collect things that they have left over sitting around, and add them to this sculpture. So a lot of the Phragmites here is taken to the community garden. They were clearing space, so I had the Phragmites to take home. I actually didn't hear the Phragmites pretty. Well, I actually cleared it for the garden. And then I brought it back from the beach. So, and the Phragmites um, isn't good really for environment, but it is, it really likes um, to go into the water column and it it collects, um, it collects um, heavy metals and binds them out of the water for maybe 20 years, at least 20 years. So um, that's a good thing, right? I mean, it's not forever, but it's something. So the Phragmites isn't actually bad in the sculpture. Uh, I have it the mycobooms, and I have oysters, and I have microorganisms that clean water. All as about things I do anyway. And maybe this oh, there it is floating. Woo! <laughs> Going off to France. That's what Lewis said. And the next year, which last year I did a minute because of COVID, I was inside just like took what was laying around, which again was created by these relationships. And I'm like, well, what do I have? And I pulled this together and I made this little solar bicycle parasailer. And that is the, the son that um, leads the mother. He was looking, uh, with a string as he was having a good time riding his bike up in the air flying. His mother was chilling out 
on a raft under a sunscreen, just enjoying life. So here's the, the, the children or the youth uh, leading. Idea before I, I do this, I want to invite people to participate in their own way, like maybe where they are to, you can follow what I'm doing or, or be in communication with me and make your own sculpture because this is just one sculpture that cleans the water as, as uh, making art. So imagine if we all made some art one year or all together, thousands of people, 3,333 people came together and made a sculpture and we floated them out and that would actually make a difference. Yay. So, I mean, right? That would be a million if we all had three, 300 mud balls per sculpture, which is a lot of mud balls. Um, so during the sculpture, these are the steps that I go through. And I've, and if anyone wants to be a part of this, I can go through these steps and um, we can all work together, building our own sculptures or helping uh, with this one. I like, it. that'd be good. And here's the lifestyles, which is teaching mud balls. This, this is on the Amos site. You can uh, Lily. Um, growing ox and out of mussels. And so this is something I'd like to do. I tried to do an incubator last year to incubate the mussels and the kelp and try to grow it instead of extracting it from the environment, which grows like a weed and it's okay to take it a little bit of it, which I only take a little. Um, but I also would like the idea of not extracting it at all and growing it well. So, and I think it's and actually still inst installing mushrooms in them. So the mushrooms eat the oil. So the hair takes the oil out of the surface of the water and then the mushrooms eat the oil. So what we need to do is create, and this is the oyster mushroom, the pink one. What we need to do is make that salt water tolerant for the East River. And here's some mussels and bladder kelp drying. And another idea, this is um, just for local resource. I like to life. Do I want to go this way or that way? And like, what would be enjoyable to me? And here are all these, um, what's open New York City East Village during COVID. These are a lot of things are open. And here's Green Map, which has a lot of um, great um, ecological places to connect to. And then lastly, I'm inviting people to organize with me or Uh -oh. to cascades of serendipity um, and this is all stuff uh, which is another lecture maybe uh, supply chain and regenerative resource flowing uh, practicing reciprocity and receiving instead of taking so we're talking about our bioregional connection we're not taking from the bioregion and all the people we're not using the farms we're not using them we're actually have, creating a relationship with them so we don't take and we we have a reciprocal so we're not taking from the land and the farmers and all their hard work we're we're creating something we're giving back and so that's it and this is our, our spring we're going to be outside so come join us and here's some information if you want to get in touch with me and be on um high low and ephemeral cats uh, in my email so get in touch thank you thank you thank you so much Dee. Dee. you're welcome Really great stuff. Really looking forward it to it. went really chat. fast. Can slow it, watch it again and slow it down. <laughs> um, our next presentation we have is from Kathy Kretzberg. Um, can Kathy, to grid, to, Hannah, can you go to grid view? I'm seeing just speaker view. Yeah, one second. Okay, so we should be in grid view now. Um, and then the next person we're going to hear from is Catherine Fragang or Kathy Kretzberg, actually. Sorry, we've already heard from um, Catherine. So Kathy Kretzberg um, is the Lower East Side artist. She's gonna talk to us a little bit about um, bio arts for this year. So let me find her video and get it up. There you are. 
Hi, Kathy. Hi. Um, here, let me. So um, I'm going to be working on the zero waste costume accessories. We started working on um, the zero waste costume uh, creation last year. And it, there's a few things I was thinking that would be great to add. So um, this is a staff that would go with that costume. And um, the idea is to use the, the same materials last year, um, this mycelium um, uh, mushrooms on the staff sort of as the top, like the, as if it was almost like the flame um, and also part of the central core. Now that I've had some experience working with those materials last year, um, we can create some sort of more ambitious uh, versions of what we started last year. And um, adding then also a sort of a, um, it looks almost like the petal, the kelp petals sort of growing up around the um, mycelium's core and um, detailing along the top, just sort of adding to the idea sort of, of, of sort of this, um, maybe not a flame, but sort of just, um, a celebration of these um, materials which are biodegradable. And I wanted to add this year um, some bamboo to um, to kind of add a little bit other, you know, some other new material. So um, the, the staff itself would be, um, I think, a thick, uh, wide, sort of a wide bamboo um, base. Uh, and then um, also, I was thinking of using bamboo fibers uh, and um, hanging some um, beads, which I'm not sure what kind of beads yet, maybe glass or something else. Um, and then that would be uh, this first piece that, that we could create. Okay, I'm ready for the next one. And um, this is uh, a new, um, a new accessory that I was going to do a little bit of sort of macrame or um, string knotting and design that um, put together um, beads and bamboo, maybe some bamboo beads also, or um, narrow bamboo uh, um, sort of, uh, I guess, uh, pendants. And um, I I've been doing a lot of work also on um, instruments and some of the materials uh, for my this these instruments that I've been creating have come from the composting yard at um, a Lower East Side Ecology Center. And one of the kind of peculiar parts of um, composting there is that people throw away their spoons and their silverware. <laughs> so I was going to use some of these spoons that actually come up a lot out of the um, compost and use those and repurpose them um, into these um, chimes sort of or, or um, so you could wear the the belly dancing scarf around your hip and then the spoons are going to, you know, be the noisemakers and also perhaps some um, bamboo also hitting um, and creating sound. And then the beads along the top would then be um, decorative. Okay, ready for the next one. Um, and then I want to try this again um, with uh, kombucha leather. Um, and uh, I was kind of working in kind of, it was, it was kind of um, adverse conditions last year when I was harvesting kombucha. I'd never really done anything like that before. And I was in the basement pulling kombucha out, you know, the, the um, leather before, while it's still moist, uh, pulling it out and, and putting it onto these different boards. And uh, this year I'd like to try it again and see if we can get um, a kombucha leather that is a little bit more resilient. 
And um, this, so I'm keeping it real simple with the kombucha and see if we can get um, those really nice panels um, and then just create, uh, I think it would be nice to have sort of a longer vest, something that goes down, you know, I guess it would have to go with a belly dancing skirt too, something that goes to the hip and then, um, and then adding um, the mycelium buttons. Uh, just I was thinking of growing those right on um, paper air egg cartons and creating these buttons that can then be hand stitched onto the kombucha leather vest. Mm -hmm. I think this is the last one. Great. Great. Thank you so much, Kathy. Thank you. Thank you. Looking forward to that and working with the bio arts again. I know that was a fun experiment last year and now we have some more experience doing it again. Um, next, Felicia, um, you want to talk a little bit about the pageant this year and how we've adapted? Um, yeah, definitely. So Crystal, you can, you know, share, um, share that presentation. Um, so basically, I think everybody really wants to know, um, Crystal, you can get the presentation up. Yeah. So everybody would like to know like how we're thinking of adapting it. Uh, last year, what we were able to do, you know, it was under lockdown. So we did a virtual pageant last year um, with costumes in Zoom. We really uh, couldn't have any kind of gatherings of people of any size. Um, I walk the route alone, live streaming, and all the contributions were recorded. But we had, you know, an incredible response of like over a hundred videos that were contributed from both gardens and performers. So what we're thinking of this year, first of all, I'll get into the workshops will be taking place at the Sixth Street Community Center. Um, with Michelle on Wednesday evening, 6.30 to 9.30, and Saturdays uh, with Lucrecia working on the puppets 12 to 4 p.m. We'll be using a combination of indoor, outdoor space. Um, we're limiting uh, the group's gathering to probably something like only 10 people. Um, we'll see how that goes as it gets warmer and we can use outside more. Uh, maybe a few more people can join. Um, we're also going to be having on Saturdays, which is during the day, a sidewalk viewing station um, where people can be working under a tent that will be roped off and passersby can at least see the action of what's going on um, outside. So that's definitely one option. We're also doing, as Katie mentioned, um, additional workshops. So uh, such as April 17th with the Lower East Side Ecology Center, which um, will take place outside, as well as the flag project that's going to be engaging many people from individuals working remotely at home to different public schools um, to different community centers. It's really a project that anyone can participate from anywhere actually in the world. You will be able to download Katie's templates if you want, print them out, paint them and mail them in. Uh, you can also create your own and mail them in or drop them off at one of our workshops and then they'll be strung together. Hopefully we'll have hundreds that can then decorate the garden fences. So then as we're thinking about, well, what are we going to do in terms of the actual pageant? We'd like to have, we're, I'm calling it a pop-up pageant this year. So it's the Ecological City Art and Climate Solutions pop-up pageant. And by pop-up, I mean, we won't really be advertising. So the people in the know, there will be a schedule. It'll be similar to last year. There'll only be a few people that go into the garden to do the actual performance. And then, each of the performances, if you want, you can play, yeah, just leave it. Each of the performances um, will be live, live streamed. So we'll be advertising sort of to the larger public, a live streamed event on Facebook. But people in the neighborhood will know, I uh, won't be publishing the schedule, but those who will know there will be things happening similar to previous years. 
um, at particular gardens and each garden determines how many people they want to allow in and we never know what the regulations will be at the time. So, um, you know, we just have to go with the flow on that one. And uh, yes, yeah, so all the visuals normally are carried in a parade and that's like hundreds and hundreds of people marching for five hours through 20 sites community gardens, neighborhood and waterfront to all the sustainability sites. Well, that won't be happening, but we will be taking those visuals and festooning the entire Lower East Side with them, um, probably focusing on maybe five large gardens, depending on volunteer capacity, because we'll need volunteers to, um, you know, be in charge of each of the sites, setting up the mural and the flags and the puppets and obviously we need one person per costume um, and you know the costumes like we did at the October Lungs Harvest Festival were behind the garden's fences so it's possible that um, you know the costume people maybe some can be behind the fence maybe have one outside each garden um, milling about the puppets, Lucrecia said, well, maybe some can be static depending on how many volunteers we get, but it would be nice to have like maybe one puppet at one of those maybe five gardens outside on the street. And then people, it'll almost be like a treasure hunt where people will know there are these visual and performative climate solutions happening, but they don't really know when, which is the purpose so that we don't get a crowd. So it's really the opposite of what we normally did, which is advertise and try to get as many people. Now it's really about doing something and not having many people or uh, trying to reduce um, so we don't have crowding and then offering uh, live stream versions of everything um, that we do. So, um, where you know the schedule would be um, I don't know what's happening with the East River Park we did have a permit from last year that's been um, is, you know supposedly going for this year so I haven't heard anything to the contrary um, so that's the plan um, we will have the waterfront performances again we won't be advertising so we're thinking you know maybe on the waterfront you can have more people than in a closed garden, but not a large crowd. And again, we'll be um, live streaming. Um, we may be able to have something like maybe 10 costume people walking with me. Last year, I walked by myself, all masked down Lower East Side streets, many locked gardens, um, no, like barely anybody was in the streets. It looked like a ghost town. So um, I'm hoping for better times ahead this spring. And um, yeah, so I think that kind of lays out what we're thinking, physically distanced performances, pop up and temporary visual art. We can have um, even music on rooftops, visuals hanging from windows and balconies. Um, you know, so just, think even people, we can put a call out to anybody in the neighborhood um, to also, like maybe they want to create prayer flags and hang them out, hang strands out their window. Um, you know, the possibilities are really endless, but it would be beautiful to have um, as much participation. So the idea, you know, you just walk around the neighborhood and you're surprised on every corner. So there it is. Thank you so much, Felicia. Um, yes, thank you so much for sharing. Obviously, we have a lot of exciting things in store this year and lots of um, adaptations as we continue to try and learn together how to get through um, all these things that are happening. Um, the next portion of our meeting here is um, a chance for us to check in with the Lower East Side sustainability um, efforts checking in from the gardens to the waterfront. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and get some updates. Um, yeah, from our Lower East Side sustainability partners. First, we're gonna hear from Wendy Brower um, speaking um, about Green Map and the Lower East Side sustainability. Let me find you here. Mm -hmm. 
There you are, indeed. Perfect. Hello. Hi. I your presentation. Here I am. Here. Do you want to pop up my slide? Said yes. thanks. Good. Great. And um, so some of these images are from last fall, but things are changing. I'll go through quickly. I made this to celebrate green infrastructure. Next slide. And it was a map and tour. Ah, there we go. There's the map. And you can still download it from my website if you want, greenmap.org. But really trying to introduce people to new ideas in green infrastructure. Next slide. And this was a walking tour, but um, in connected with the show I had at the Museum of Reclaimed Urban Space. We actually partnered with DD2 on part of uh, on our How Green Is My City, um, on a Where's My Spot Day. But um, even though the exhibit's down now, it was a really good experience for me to go through all our stuff. Um, and we started, did it at Morris. Morris got really flooded at Sandy. And you see a picture there of it being bailed out in 2012. Think, next slide. Um, and so right around the corner from there is La Plaza Culturelle and right across is the Garden 9C. And it is like a haven on that intersection of 9th and C because of these two gardens. And if you go inside Pla La Plaza, you'll see there's rain barrels and uh, there's all kinds of ways to collect and store uh, stormwater. There's solar composting and native plants. Now this year, of course, we couldn't go in the garden much, but you should, could sure see a lot that was going on. I think this year will be different and many of the gardens will be open and maybe even doing more outside the garden. That was part of the idea with Gardens Rising. That's the bioswale. Uh, maybe 2021, we'll start seeing them in the neighborhood, but these hold and store rainwater at the curbside. We sure hope that um, more rainwater and resiliency features actually get built this year. Next slide. Um, and one that's new from uh, the spring or summer is open streets on Avenue B. And this is from 6th Street to 14th Street. There's actually a petition link at the bottom. We're trying to make it permanent. And um, it's a really interesting potential if you think about what would we do if we had the whole space all the time. Um, Oh, um, next slide, please. Um, I was going to point out also that street trees are really important in all this mix. So in 2019, I um, asked, I made a draft resolution for more street trees that CB3 accepted, and there's some number of trees being planted. This one that you see in this picture, this is a tree pit. Um, art and care project that J.K. Kanipa and other neighbors put together to involve young people in taking care of the trees. The trees are super important to all of us and a mature tree can be 70 times more beneficial uh, to us and the planet than a little sapling. So it's really important to take care of the trees we have. And although the city has not yet really started much of the, the stewardship for trees programming yet. I believe they'll be restarting it soon. I sure hope so. Can you the next slide? <clears throat> Thank you. So now we're taking a look at a couple of maps that you can see um, where on the left, where the land used to end. So beyond that was salt, it's salt, it's, it's a lot of it's salt marsh in the neighborhood. And you can see where landfill began. And interestingly enough, if you look at today's flood um, zones, they really do follow where the land was filled in the past, drained and filled. Um, there's many things we still don't understand about <laughs> what the, how the water moves underground. Um, but part of the reason I got so into this is because of East River Park. and. Um, it's impending uh, rays, being raised and raised. So totally destroyed and filled in and more put on top. And I know Eileen is speaking to this, so I won't go too far down that road. Next slide, please. Um, but there's things we can do about it. Did I man it? Let's see what I put in here. Oh, well, um, back when 
East River Park plan was pre presented, it was called the Big U plan. And on the right, you can see that it included upland greening. So there was to be extensive new tree planting, bioswales, all sorts of stuff in the neighborhood. We still need it. Um, and it, the girls club has a, a rooftop garden. I don't know how many we have, but I feel like we could use so many more green roofs around here to really absorb that rainwater. And you can see that iconic photo that was at 8th and C. Next one, please. So um, if many of us who live on the Lower East Side have noticed the NYCHA campuses are having major construction work. That's FEMA funded repair and fortification. And there's a map there, a link to the map there that you can go see in detail what's happening at all of them. But it's siloed off. Um, next slide, please. Um, so the planning that's going on in the neighborhood doesn't always in, in take into account what's going on at NYCHA and vice versa. And to me, that's a real loss for all of us. Um, if you, uh, these are some of the maps that we have made about the East Rivers, showing people how far the water came in, proposing a countermeasure, which in the, the map in the corner is bicycling. So we made that map in Chinese, Spanish, and English when City Bike hit the streets to help increase the amount of cycling um, re around here. Um, next slide. Um, ah. Okay, so we'll stop there. So if, because I know Eileen's gonna be talking about it. Um, and I meant to add to this deck and I have one that's sitting on my desktop. Um, I responded, to, well, anyhow, let me stop there because there's so much richness in this conversation. And I know you have gardens and the park coming up, but I just wanted to say the streets are really important and getting more so. Um, Felicia is going to suggest you look into the new open culture that just got announced this week because they're opening up street spaces for performance um, around our neighborhood and many others this year. So um, the culture is going to be welcome in the street is going to be very neat and maybe fits right in with what you're doing. Thanks everybody. Thank you so much, Wendy. And yes, we've heard about the open culture. That's something we'll, we're really excited. Um, to look into more. I think you're right. That would be a really great opportunity um, to see how else we can get the community involved. Um, the next person we'll hear from is Charles Kresel. We'll be speaking on behalf of the community gardens. Go ahead and get you to unmute yourself, Charles. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, so there are 53 community gardens in the Lower East Side um, and they make up about seven and a quarter acres. Um, the gardens are open to anybody. Um, however, with COVID, we've had a lot of restrictions from Green Thumb, the Parks Department. Uh, right now, I believe it's you're restricted to 25 people for an event and you have to get a permit for the event. So I would think that with, um, with what you guys want to do on the 8th, that it would be better to try to emphasize being outside the gardens and hanging things on the fences. I think that would be really, really important. Um, in order to have an event, you have to get a permit from the parks department and each garden has to do that, which is pretty difficult for a garden to have to go through. Um, so I would think about all that and um, Try to emphasize the 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 sidewalk and the fences of the gardens. I think, um, as far as costuming is concerned, I think you know using the idea of the mask as a double mask kind of a thing to create other ideas. So masking is uh, more creative within the COVID experience that we're all having. Um, last year we had our um, our um, Harvest Arts Festival in October. And we did not ask for any permits from the parks department. We had all our performances at the gardens uh, fences so the people could walk by and were free to continue to move. So that's what I would think that would be the better plan for this year for you guys too. I mean, Felicia, you guys did it last year with us. Uh, I think the problems are probably gonna be kind of similar at this point. Hopefully they're not, things will open up in May, but I'm not sure. 
Um, we are having um, our Spring Awakening event is on May the 1st, and we're working with the Open Streets for that. For lungs, you guys are welcome to table at that or do some kind of workshop within that. It's, it's a Saturday, May the 1st, our work or our uh, rain date is May the 2nd, Sunday, and it will be on Avenue B between 8th and 9th Street. Uh, we're going to have some music and a little bit of food maybe and, and um, sort of a small mini parade maybe through Avenue B. Uh, again, we're not trying to get permits for any of this, although we are working with the Open Streets for. Um, I would, I, you know, I'm very hesitant to, the city is having, we're having such difficulties with the city and the Parks Department, with East River Park, the gardens and everything else. I'm very, very um, uh, reluctant to try to involve them in anything we're doing. At the same time, that gives us a lot of independence and uh, and um, puts our situation in, uh, well, I, I don't want to say jeopardy, but it, 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 it uh, gives us an edge that uh, we normally don't have with the, um, we, we don't have it in the neighborhood, but we have it with the city and the, polit the politics of, uh, of how the gardens and green spaces are operating in the city right now. And East River Park is the perfect example of that, but that's been part of our ongoing um, difficulties with the city in the last two or three years. So I would love to see you guys end up in East River Park with this, whatever is going to happen, just to give it, uh, just to honor the park itself. And, you know, the gardens, the gardens would certainly want to cooperate in anything that can be put on the fences. Uh, we can help facilitate that and any kind of performance at the gates of the garden, I would think would be easier. So um, that's what I'm thinking about with you guys this year. And uh, we, Lungs has a lot of programming through the gardens. We've had it for, we've been in existence since 2011. Uh, last year, the only program we were able to run was our CSA, which is a weekly $10 for a bag of, of, of um, food that's um, grown that's not exactly um, a family grown farm from Orange County. Um, before that, we had uh, programs for children and um, seniors and um, summer youth employment programs. We've been running those, but because of COVID, everything's been shut down. So I'm not sure where we're going to be with all any of that this summer. but. Um, we're certainly open to working with uh, you guys this year and um, see what we can do. So thank you. Great, thank you, Charles. Great, thank you so much. Awesome, thanks so much, Charles. Um, next we'll be hearing about the um, East River Park waterfront um, and more about the East River Park action. As you hear, everyone keeps talking about East River Park. I'm here to tell us more about East River Park is Eileen, let me find Eileen. There you are. Okay. Ask you to unmute yourself here and we'll share your slide. Okay, great. Hi, um, I mean, I'm speaking as a very new member of East Park Action. And as you probably know, the group is kind of an amazing coalition of artists and scientists and, and lawyers and community organizers and um, people who have worked in city politics for a long time. And so um, I think uh, our combination of talents are pretty awesome. And I think we recently restructured as a group and kind of turned into kind of a, a team structure, which is a little bit like ACT UP was in the day of affinity groups. And so the two, I mean, I really came on I, as a longtime East Village resident. Um, I only learned in August that, that the city is planning this complete destruction of our park and um, became part of this group. And so I've, I've been um, basically um, spearheading two different projects. One is very obvious, which is a legal fund. Um, and of course, you guys are all invited to, to help us on this because we don't know the city. The city um, says they'll be breaking ground on, um, you know, the the Esker project, the demolition of the park, in late spring, and nobody knows when that is. They've already started pulling trees out that are not part of anybody's plan. So it seems like there's no level of respect 
and from the parks department or the city. And so what we're doing now is really um, having a creating a serious legal fund. We're reaching out to our regular mailing list, but also um, I've been I've been personally contacting um, people in the arts community asking for individual donations. And we've we've already made like you know 15% of our huge goal and 50% of our immediate goal, which is to work with a um, a lawyer who um, I think our, our plans are twofold. One is basically to to get a TRO, a temporary restraining order, and to stop them in their tracks. You know, we had a a legal um, we had a, a a suit last summer that we lost, and now we have an appeal. But if this appeal succeeds, we can stop them from doing anything because we really want to slow it down. Because when we have a new um, a new mayor, a new borough president, we can get we already have candidates who are interested in thinking hard about whether this is a good plan. Um, so that's the first thing. So obviously, you know, you can just go to East River Park Action and just hit the donate button and give us $10. If you have wealth in your family or in your community, tell us, tell them to give us more because we're really literally trying to save the park. We don't think it's a done deal. And so we're working for all of us. And the other thing, the other thing is um, a march. And I know that in COVID, you know, it's, it's um, questionable in some ways. And so we're, you know, we're, we're masking, we're social distancing, but on um, the march we have planned is called the March, March to the Park. And it'll be on, we, we, we thought about beware of the Ides of March, but some felt that was obscure. So it's just a March, a March, March to the Park on um, Sunday, March 14th. We'll meet at St. Mark's Church. We're gonna start there. We're gonna walk to, um, to the Abron Center, and from there go down, down to the, um, you know, to the amphitheater for talks, and and so we're we're inviting we're we're inviting groups of of all sorts and all stripes, um, who I mean because I think part of the thing with the um, part of the thing with the march is that even though all sorts of people like myself know something's happening at the park, people don't quite get that we're literally going to the city literally is planning to pull out every one of the 1,000 trees in the park, cover it with dirt, and and there it will sit for five to 10 years. And um, as it, as um, Wendy pointed out earlier, the plan is to, of course to build a new park on top of the park, but that means spindly new trees. And as we know, a mature tree um, is, you know, clean 70% more oxygen than a, a new baby tree, you know, so we want this mature park. We want to keep the park that we have with innovation. So our, basically our, our, our desire is to stop the city, um, to insist on a real environmental plan, which, which dovetails with our legal actions. And then, and then to actually have an, have a, a new plan that will actually facilitate, um, um, the, the health and well-being of the people in the neighborhood because you know the people who are most as we know the people who will be most affected by this demolition is is the section 8 housing right across the river um, where I mean the, the particles will be flowing into the faces of these people for five to ten years if the city says three years they mean ten and so we're really talking about you know the end of childhoods the ends of lives I mean literally in terms of having green space um, but but immediate health health threats. Um, so um, I think that's what you know. I, I think because this is a um, because this is an artist group. I thought I would um, end my presentation with a, um, a rather dire poem, um, which is called "The Park." And so here goes. Politicians are like actors, and real estate investment groups are like vampires. Politicians think they have to let them bite them or they won't get any work. The rest of us are humans living around the show. Squirrels are squirrels, birds are birds. Our park is a giant stage we thought was real because we walked there every day. It is a set that Robert Moses built so that he could run his highway alongside of it. My dog knows the story. You know the story. Everyone knows the story. The vampires are building a giant boat on top of our park in order to save it. It will take them about 10 years. The waters will rise. The children will be old. I will be dead. The vampires will be rich. The politicians hope to keep drinking the blood on their shelves from back when they were in that play. 
So we hope to stop that play. Um, so think March 14th, Sunday at noon, come to St. Mark's Church and, um, and throw, us some, throw us some cash because we're going to rescue the park. We're gonna stop them. Thank Yay. you. <laughs> great, thank you so much, Eileen. It's really great work we're doing, obviously. Um, everyone, all right, let me get out of the spotlight. Perfect. Great, yes, thank you so, so much for the really important work you're doing to save our East River Park. Um, now with the, let's see, with this next portion of our Zoom call here, we're gonna open it up for a discussion um, and have a portion for Q&A or announcements. We ask that during this time, you directly um, relate your questions to Ecological City, for example, as much as I would love to hear more about um, the green map specifically, like for example, if I wanted to ask Wendy about the green map, that's great and we have an opportunity to do that. But for right now, we're trying to focus our questions more on Ecological City and how that project will look this year, um, workshops and plans for the pop-up pageant, et cetera. Um, so I guess if you have a question, you can go ahead and use the raise your hand feature and then let me know who you'd like to direct your question to. Or this could I have a question, Felicia, about the uh, performances and the dancers. If there's any chance that we can actually have the stage like we did in the LES in the Lungs Garden when we did Monarch and Shakti on the water, is there any chance that we can have live performance that's masked or not? Oh, we're planning on having live performances. Yeah, maybe you came in late. So yeah, the plan is um, there won't be a parade most likely. Maybe there'll be 10 costumes, physically distanced walking through the neighborhood to the sites, which we won't publicize the schedule. And yes, we will have performances. And just like Charles said that, you know, that was generally the plan that if within a garden, you know, that's a very contained space. So, you know, only the performers. So you may have only five of the performers and a video person who's live streaming inside the garden and a couple of gardeners to do the ceremony. So that's how the performances in the garden are taking place. Some performances are outside schools or on steps or outside the Sixth Street Community Center as we've done in the past. And then in East River Park, you know, there's a lot more space. So, you know, it's not gonna be a parade where we're gonna be moving hundreds of people there, um, but, you know, we'll be able to have more of a gathering. I'm not gonna advertise the schedule, but I think everybody can certainly figure out what the schedule is. And um, the idea would be, you know, for <coughs> anyone who's participating, like, let's say all the costumes are spread out between the gardens and the different neighborhood sites that will kind of be happening between 11 and 3. And then the idea would be that all the people and who participants who know will know that they can reappear on the waterfront at 4. So it won't be like you'll be following a parade over there, but you know, we'll be saying meet up at 4 and then the waterfront performances will pretty much follow the schedules last year. We're just not, you know, we're not going to advertise it because we don't want to have 100 people there. Um, and then everything we do will be live streamed. So I have two questions. Can you get on Cuomo's list for this uh, pop-up event that he's doing uh, with the 300 performances throughout New York State to get on his uh, kind of social media platform to advertise it? And will you have a stage built so dancers can perform on point? Oh, we can't do anything like that. We can't bring any structures into the park. Yeah, it's, it's so all the performances have to be on hardscape or grass, no point. Yeah, and it's all just exactly as we've done it before. You know, there's no big structure. Everything is temporary. Um, but you know. you've had a beautiful stage built on the Lower East Side in the past in the no. Lungs Garden. No. Well, yeah, Lungs did. A, lungs yes, you did. did. Yeah. Yes, you did. But we didn't do any well, building we did one for our own festival but that was uh, that was in the fall that was a harvest arts festival we've done that yeah. in the past yes but yeah. we have so you're not doing that for this 
No, because we have 20 different sites. So we've got to keep everything really contained. We have a very limited budget, you know, the park, it's very complicated. Everything we are permitted to do is just, you know, bring in sound, that's about it. And I have to go to the police to get the sound permit from them, but it's, mm -hmm. you know, specifically our permit is no stage structures. So, mm -hmm. so I just want to share that the, the presentations are so profound. They're so amazing. They're mind blowing what everybody's bringing to the table. And I was able in the pandemic to set a piece on 10 uh, pre-professional conservatory Juilliard level dancers that are ready to perform in this with masks on, with beautiful handmade shredded costumes out of recycled couture dresses that they made. I mean, it's, it's so perfect. It's so incredible. They're from New Hope, Pennsylvania, Lambertville, New Jersey. And these kids would be traveling for the first time to tour and perform in New York City and work with your NYU ent interns. And it literally would change the lives of these 10 dancers that are all 17 and 18 years old. And the fact that this genius crowd on this call that we can't collectively figure out a way for these kids to perform or those students at NYU or Hunter or Marymount or whatever, what could we do collectively to really embrace the performing arts, whether it's vocal performance or, or modern dance or classical ballet. I mean, what you're doing is so remarkable, but I feel like if we just try to research it a little bit more, we might be able to host the performing arts to complement everything that everybody on this call is doing already. Yeah, well, Lynn, we can have a more detailed discussion about it. You know, we're limited. We have a very, we have less budget than we've ever had in the past. We've lost a lot of support due to impacts of COVID on people's finances. Um, you know, it's a bare bones kind of operation. So we don't have the ability, you know, we don't have a huge staff and we're dealing with 20 sites. So, you know, we've just got to keep everything relatively simple. But if you can try to think how you can be self-contained and what you can do and be responsible for, you know, that's good. We just, with 20 sites, we can't like be involved in expensive stage setups from one site. You know, we don't have the ability to do that. So, and you're and committed I, to May 8th? When we did the uh, no thing, rain date. When we did the, May 9th, the following day. Then when we did the staging for the Lungs Festival, it cost us $1,500 and it had to be up and down in two days and it was volunteers doing the work. So it's, a, it's an intense amount of work just to get a stage up like that, which is a beautiful thing to do, but you know, it's, it's really difficult now with COVID even to have it, to say you wanna have a crowd, you know? So. I understand, I thank that. you. Thank you for clarifying that. I really appreciate it. Great, thank you. Anyone else have any other questions or anything else we'd like to discuss more? Yeah, maybe some of the new people can introduce themselves and say what brought them here because there's some new people. Are you scrolling through the different grids? Yes. <clears throat> <clears throat> well, if no one has any questions or anything else to add, no one feels inclined to give a personal introduction, which is perfectly fine. Um, what we'd like to do to end with Catherine, you can you could speak. I have one comment. Yeah, which is that um, I'm not the uh, workshop, the big workshop person. I don't have a series of workshops. It's all outreach. It's people doing things in their own homes and then contributing them. And I'd really like to invite um, all the LES uh, sustainable partners because I'm really the most outreachy person. Um, if you could, if you have messages or images or lessons that you'd like um, added to your, uh, you know, sent out to schools, um, images, um, I, whatever you have in mind, um, please send them to me and I will uh, work them into templates for kids to work with. 
Thank you, Catherine. And I'll actually put my email here if you want to do this. Uh, may I make a comment also? Yes, please. Um, I'm I'm Anne from El Sal Brillante, and I'm just very excited about the idea of the um, the hanging of things on the fence, mainly because we have like a really big fence, like goes on for almost a whole block, and um, we also have like two or three artists in the garden. One's named Maddie, and um, she's very talented. the The concept of puppets, I think, is very exciting, and I think there's maybe one or possibly even two people in the garden who would be all over that suggestion. And um, also there's a number of kids in the community who would like to do this coloring in of the mandala. Um, and we have, a, we have a picnic table and we're also making a new table out of cement in our garden, even during COVID. And um, there would be places for maybe two to three people to sit and color or something like that. Um, so those ideas are something that we can probably accommodate. We have a huge, our garden is really huge, but, um, thank you so much. Beautiful presentations. Thank you so much for inviting me. Thank you. Thank you so much. That's such a great thing to know too, that we have that space and, um, that you have people that want to be involved and that we could do something outside there. Um, Let's see. Oh yeah, Catherine put your fragging in there too. Yeah, Jenny, please go ahead and introduce yourself. Hi everybody. Sorry, I was eating a little bit of something. So when you offer for people to introduce themselves the first time, I didn't raise my hand. Sure. Um, but I'm Gianni Rodriguez. I'm the new EJ Environmental Justice and Climate Resiliency Organizer at Goals. Um, I just started about under a month ago, so I'm really getting myself situated in my position, but it's really exciting to be here in this group of people who are engaged in environmental work and sustainability work in the Lower East Side. I'm from the Lower East Side, born and raised, um, but I did a lot of uh, climate resiliency work down in Atlanta, where I graduated uh, from a small liberal arts women's college, so um, really excited to be here. Um, I'm going to put my email also in the chat in case people want to chat with me. Um, excuse me. Um, I'm really trying to get a membership base of people in the Lower East Side who want to organize around this work too. So um, really just interested in talking to some interested parties and getting to know everybody better. Um, so if you just want to like chat for 30 minutes on Zoom or over the phone, I'd love to do that too. So. Yeah, and Gianni, we were thinking, you know, of in the past, Goals has put together a group and one year worked with the theater director, um, Drew, and they created the performance. These were actually youth and residents from the NYCHA housing that Goals put okay. together. And they created a performance about surviving Hurricane Sandy, their experience. Okay. Um, so we can speak more about what yes. maybe you could put together in terms of a group that either wants to maybe um, engage on a performance. Shahida from Infinite Movement. I don't know, her husband also works for Goals. Mm -hmm. you know Shahida. So she um, last year put together a dance piece. I think she wants to do another dance piece um, with the youth there. Uh, through I think Henry Street Settlement and NYCHA um, for under the Williamsburg Bridge. But that could be either you could do something performative or something visual, like even getting a group together to contribute um, climate solution flags and you could kind of direct that project, so. Okay, yeah, um, I've taken some notes from the presentations and um, I'm excited to get them back to the team because, um, like I said, I'm getting myself situated, so I'm still trying to figure out um, how and what role we've played with a bunch of our community partners, too. So I actually didn't know that <laughs> um, before I, I'd come to this meeting. So that's really good to know. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, so I, I'll definitely go back uh, to our staff so we can think about how to participate and contribute. Yeah, and I'll send you an email. I'll even send you the links to the videos so you can actually see what was done. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Um, Jill, 
uh, Grace Exhibition Space. You have your hand raised. Would you like to say something? Hi. Yes, I, I think I, I should say something. I'm still a little shy. I'm, I lived in the East Village years ago and I'm, I'm back, but I was gone for a few years. And I started Grace Exhibition Space for Performance Art in 2006 and we were in Brooklyn and we moved to 182 Avenue C two years ago. And we had Didi Mosher who gave a presentation as an artist in residence from April till November this year. Teresa Burns, who's been in the Lower East Side for many years, is the artist in residence there now. And in May, we'll have artist Jody Linky Chow. So she'll be the artist that we will have who will be participating in some way with ecological cities. And um, I think Dee Dee mentioned she'd like, she's gonna be doing things in the plaza in front of our space. So that's a little introduction of who we are, who I am being here in the meeting and that we will be contributing a performance. Great. And thank you for the Great. <laughs> Great, thank you so much. Um, Laura Ward, I see your hands raised as well. Yeah, um, so yeah, I'm a, um, a choreographer and an artist and performer who's been based in the Lower East Side for a long time. And uh, now I've been splitting my time between the Hudson Valley and the Lower East Side. So that whole Hudson Valley watershed thing is really uh, relatable for me. Um, but I am, I'm doing so much movement on Zoom and especially for kids who are spending a lot of time on Zoom. I'm really interested in doing more work. I have done work with Brown um, University and with Vassar as like just a guest lecturer. And then also with um, PCTI, which is the Passaic County Technical Institute. It has a dance program. So I would like to put together something that could be used in the, um, the, the pageant that could be like a processional dance, which I would be happy if anybody has groups of youth that are interested in dancing, it would be gestural enough movement that wouldn't need to be super um, trained dancers. But I'd like to put something together that involves other people, not just my dancers and with my dancers. It's something that I've done a lot with um, different set settings of children dancing with my dance company. So I, I'm interested in that. If anybody has a link into people or communities. Well, Laura, exactly. Uh, where uh, Gianni at Goals, there's a good potential collaboration there. Is Johnny there? Yeah. Yeah, so Johnny, you know, that's one possible option. Laura, as a choreographer, because she also, um, I, I was going to put her at, on the waterfront site where the labyrinth is, which is just before the Williamsburg Bridge, right there near Houston Street. So that would be um, a great connection. So I'll, I'll send an email introducing you. I've got, her, I've got her email, so I'll oh. re reach out directly. Yeah. Then you don't have to do it. Great. Perfect. Great. I'm glad we're making these connections, though. This is why it's great that we have these meetings and we can all connect and come together. Um, Abner. See, I have one, there's one more hand raised. Abner is also has a hand raised. Hey. Yeah, Abner, Hi, wanna, everyone. Yes, um, I'll try to be very brief about this. Um, I think I, I tried to join last time. So I'm Abner, I'm a Filipino, but I'm currently in New York. I've been moving places during this time because of my research. I am uh, an Asian Cultural Council uh, Fellowship grantee um, in this very unique time. And I've been here for almost a year now. I'm set to return to the Philippines. And just being in this space right now, um, I feel so grateful because my um, my practice is um, in theater and uh, interdisciplinary, but also um, really shifting more into ecological arts practices and reimagination of collaborations, basically of, of, you know, what's because of what's happening and really been trying to map um, many intersections of uh, mental health, human rights and climate crisis um, themes. And I am speaking here because I barely know people who in New York and I've been trying to trace I know uh, networks and artists who are into this practice while especially I'm in the city I have 
two or three weeks left. Um, and for sure, I'm, I'm thinking of long-term here as well and really bridging yeah. gaps. Um, in my country, I would be devising with the youth um, on climate action with the Department of Education and all that and other cultural institutions. I would be very happy to hear from you and we'd be sharing some links as well in the chat. Um, it would be very helpful on my research and my practice. And if there's anything I could contribute in the future, um, as I'm also planning to, to work uh, collaboratively, uh, interculturally and in interdisciplinary um, process, then I'd be happy to hear from you. That's all, thank you. <laughs> Will you be here in May or you're leaving? You'll be that's that's the thing. And fortunately, during the lockdown last year, I was like in Indianapolis when I decided to, you know, move out of New York. Um, so, so I'm I'm my grant is ending on March first, and I wish I could ask them to to extend me. Um, but uh, I don't know, I, I really want to, it sounds so all, everything is exciting. And this is exactly what, uh, why I wanted to go back to New York to see how the city is, you know, uh, how artists and cultural workers, uh, leaders are working together to reimagine the city. And I've, I've seen some traces on that, on the Hudson Yards. And um, try to meet artists, but this one is a very interesting circle. So thank you for, for uh, having this platform. Okay. Thank you for joining us, Abner. There's a request in the chat room for you to share your email address if you're comfortable doing so. Um, I think it's exciting for us to see um, how excited everyone is to connect with each other and um, share these passion projects and things that we all care so much about. I saw um, Marcia and Ray. Uh, we're approaching eight o'clock here, so I wanna be, Maybe just go quickly. Oh, to sorry, Marsha, you have your hand raised. Sure, go ahead, Marsha. Yeah, I was just wondering, you know, I'm trying to write a poem about Elizabeth Street Garden, right? And I wondered, is that one of your 20 sites? Um, we physically won't be able to get over there, but I was going to have you uh, present it maybe at Parque de Tranquilidad on the Lower East Side. To say uh, where? Will you say that again? It's a garden on Fourth <laughs> Street. I'll, I'll I'll email you, but it's a garden on. I'm having a little bit of a hard time, you know, getting inform. I mean, getting inspired. Let's put it that way. But it's a story, that's for sure. And um, and you know, and I haven't been able to get down there, but I will. I just had my second vaccination shot. Great. So, um, Did you connect with whoop. Joseph? Whoop. I connected yeah, I connected with him. With Joseph and with his dad. Okay, great. But it's a, you know, and I don't know when the decision is coming down. You know, the, the, the lawyer, the judge is looking at it. But yeah. I was just, by listening to everybody tonight, I was thinking of some sort of a chorus on the spot. I, I was thinking of some sort of a chorus on the spot. You know, uh, where there's a free friend, whatever I have to say, you know, and then there's a, I don't know, I'm just playing with that. But that might be possible, right? Without... Um, yeah, anything, anything is possible, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll go over the details with you. Okay. Eileen. Great. Yeah. Okay. I just had a couple of um, corrections, but I, though I wanted to say that I too, I, I just got the, the vaccine yesterday and I was a little sick. I had not shivers sick. and stuff. I've been I've been all day. Not good. Not good. I've I mean, been sick. yeah. I have a fever. I, I, my arm feels like a, an, ox, an oxen. Yeah, awful. Oh, I'm better to get it than not, but it was not fun. I just wanted to point out that I replaced Jasmine Sanchez, and I wanted to acknowledge that, that Jasmine is a remarkable speaker and organizer and political figure and such a, I mean, so she, she was um, not so much snowed in as I think her plane was scheduled, her plane was canceled and scheduled for when this meeting was happening. And that's why I came instead of Jasmine today, but you will hear in the future. And also as a point of correction, because I'm not a scientist and I, instead of reading a statement, I decided to just speak. And as Wendy pointed out in the chat, it's important to know that because we're le losing a thousand trees, mature trees in East River Park, that, um, that a mature tree is 70 times more effective at 
clean, cleaning and cooling the air than a sapling. And that's what we've got to know about why to lose an old growth tree is a tragedy for all of us. It cleans what empty. Is, what is their purpose? What is What are they trying to accomplish? Well, they say that it's it's for better flood control, but I think it's for better real estate purposes. Um, because I think our city government is highly inhabited by real estate interests. And so it's a it's a more expensive plan that supposedly is about protecting us. But I think we had a great plan in 2018 that the city threw out. And that's why we're fighting to get back to that plan or something similar, because we don't need to kill the park to protect it. You know? Thank you, Eileen. And I want to anyway, I'll, I'll follow up with you about seeing if we can include your poem along the way to the path. <laughs> Hannah, you want to close it out? Yes, that's, um, I was just going to say, as we're approaching eight o'clock here, something that we're hoping to do um, to close out this virtual experience um, is, um, for those of you that have attended our earlier meetings, we like to come, um, come together and do a collaborative collage um, so if you can look up a picture on your phone, or if you have a picture printed out um, of a Lower East Side sustainability site, that, or just a picture of a garden, a picture of nature, we're going to play the song Super Nature. Um, and then we're going to do a collaborative movement together, where we um, swing our arms to the left, swing our arms to the right, and then spin in our relative space as much as we can. And then we'll hold up our image of nature up to our camera. So then we can, um, while we have the screen recording here, we'll be able to see this collective collage that we've made out of these images from nature. Okay, so um, Crystal, go ahead and start the song. Everyone can get their pictures ready. We're gonna let it play a little bit and then I'll guide you with left, right, spin, and then we'll hold up the images. Science opened up the door. We would feed the hungry fleas till they couldn't eat no more. But the poisons that we made right. touched the creatures down below. Thank you everyone so much again for coming to our planning and visioning meeting today. Um, again, there's lots of links in the chat here. Um, this meeting was recorded. So as soon as it gets processed, we'll find a way to post it online and share it with all of you that are interested. Um, if you RSVP'd through the Eventbrite, you'll probably be sent a link to the recording. Otherwise, it will likely be posted on our Facebook. Um, if you don't already follow us on Facebook and Instagram, please do so and keep updated with us. Um, thank you to the artists for showing um, all their exciting plans today and um, really looking forward to coming together and working with all of you. Yeah, and workshops are starting up on Saturday, February 27th with Lopecia and then on Wednesday with Michelle. Again, there's limited um, sign up. I think we've limited it to seven at this point. Um, when it gets warmer, you know, there can be more because it'll be, uh, but um, please sign up on Eventbrite. If you really want to participate, grab those few slots.